Hey there, CPO here, and we're on part two of the frame assembly for the Raptor 700, which includes a lot more than just the frame. Pages 10 through 14 is what we're getting through. So this is my Scorpion motor, and as you can see here, the flat for the pinion is uh, too close to the motor for where I need it for the pinion. So what I'm going to do is affix it to the motor mount with just a couple of screws, not thread locked or anything, because I want to figure out where that pinion is going to sit so I can grind a new flat. So I'm placing the motor mount on the frame and again I'm going to secure it with a couple of screws uh, just temporarily. I'm going to take them off here uh, after this point. Um, and then um, this will allow me to get the motor in position where it's going to be. Now I'm using a 12 tooth pinion. The kit comes with a 13 tooth uh, so I ordered a separate pinion for this. So I'm just going to slip this on uh, the shaft and get it pushed up out of the way. And then I'm going to put the uh, lower bearing uh, block for the pinion on and the way it would sit. And uh, just essentially I'm just going to line up the holes so everything is where it would be. And then, uh, you know, make sure also that the, uh, the top of the bearing, the flat part of the bearing is up. So now that I've got the pinion in place, I'm just going to use a Sharpie and spin the motor, which will rotate the motor shaft under the pinion. And that's basically going to leave me a black mark that I can use as a guide for essentially where I'm going to want that flat to be. Now the pinion has uh, two flat spots. It's got two, uh, two grub screws. One's at a 90 from the other. So I'm going to go ahead and grind out those two spots. I'm slipping this through a plastic Ziploc bag, which should give a pretty tight seal to protect the motor. And I am zipping up the back trying to keep everything out uh, of that motor. So I'm using a little grinding wheel. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. I know people use the, the grinding discs that work really well. Um, I could have spent more time getting it just perfect, but in the end, as long as I had a flat spot for that grub screw, I felt like I was doing all right. So I ended up doing, like I said, two flats on the, uh, on the motor. And you can see now where the screws are gonna be, I have flat spots on the shaft. So now I'm going to go ahead and permanently put the motor onto the motor shaft, thread locking and all of that. And then I'm going to mount the motor uh, temporarily and loosely uh, onto the frame. Uh, we need it loose for a couple reasons. One, I'm going to take it apart uh, a little bit later to do some final work with this uh, pinion and bearing assembly. But uh, also you will need to leave it loose for adjusting the pinion mesh. So again, uh, the flat part goes up, and I'm going to put this in place for now. Uh, and there are several different strategies for dealing with using thread lock on the motor shaft to that uh, bearing race, but I'll deal with that a little bit later. So for now, I'm just going to keep kind of mocking things up, and uh, partly to get a look at and show you how everything lines up all the internals, uh, but also um, just to uh, try and get as much done as I can before I actually put the case on. Now, on this particular heli, the uh, collar for the main shaft goes on, and it's uh, it's not even adjustable. You put it on, and then you screw it in. And then you've also got this elevator control arm and the control link. When you put the link on, make sure you put it so it's facing correctly the uh you know, the ball link has a larger hole towards the ball and a smaller hole away from the ball. Make sure you look at that. And, uh, you know, it was, again, interesting that there's very little adjustment for this. Everything is kind of pre-drilled and, uh, and you just put it together and make it happen. So I am screwing down and tightening the collar now. And what we're going to do eventually is that main bearing block, the top one, we're going to undo that to uh, to do our final install. So now uh, putting the frame side on and making sure everything fits the way it should, and it does, and uh, putting down a couple of screws just loosely. Um, so the good thing is because I've got the main shaft, and this is how I kind of like to put the two sides together, I put the main shaft through the bearing blocks and that helps keep them aligned automatically because the shaft is in there. A lot of people also use a trick of 
putting the uh, the assembly on a, sh a you know plate of glass or something that's guaranteed to be flat for the alignment. I'm going to kind of use a hybrid approach. I'm going to do both of those. So I'm loosely putting all of the screws in the middle around the uh, the bearing blocks, and uh, and then just a couple around the uh, the sides. Again, everything's just kind of put into place loosely to give me a platform uh, to stand on the glass. And then I just pulled this uh, plate of glass off of one of the coffee tables. My wife loves it when I use furniture for building, uh, so uh, I'm sure she'll be happy about this. Uh, but that gives me a flat surface, and once I have it all flat, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten down these screws. I did pre-thread lock uh, the ones I want to put thread lock on, obviously, uh, the ones I'm not going to remove later. Uh, and again, I don't know if this is necessary with the main shaft in the bearings, uh, the main bearing blocks already or not, but uh, it makes me feel better to do it this way. All right, so now everything is uh, tightened down. I don't need that glass anymore. I'll get that out of the way. And I'm just going to go through and start putting in screws and getting everything locked in. Uh, and tighten down and not forgetting you know obviously uh, the canopy mounts go in certain places and I'm tightening those down in those locations. Thread lock on pretty much everything now uh, again the motor I'm going to take out and the motor uh, pinion bearing and this top block. So I'm taking this top block and I'm loosening it up this is going to give me some room to work uh, and with that, um, I go ahead and attach the main gear uh, with the screws. And uh, then uh, the final step is to reseat this top block and just basically push down on it um, to remove all of the play from the main shaft and then insert the screws. This time I am thread locking them in. And uh, that was pretty much the easiest way that, uh, that I've seen to be able to get this main shaft locked in was to, uh, to have the collar already on and then loosen the main block up top and then and seat that last. So I know a lot of people try and, and leave the main block on and then push up the collar and work inside the frame to get that collar tightened down. This was easier for me. All right, remember uh, I mentioned before, uh, inner hole uh, is going to be the larger one. So when you clip that on there, just make sure you've got it right. You can flip that around, but it's kind of hard to do once you get that whole frame put together. Alrighty, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the grub screws on my pinion, a little bit of thread lock. Uh, I'm letting it rest down on that bearing assembly, and I know that's where I want it, so I'm going to do that. And I'm doing this with the main gear in, mostly for my own benefit, so I can kind of see how that lines up. You don't need to have the main gear. As a matter of fact, I've got the the motor assembly pushed back away from the main gear so it's not touching at all. It's completely free uh, because I don't want it interfering with uh, getting that pinion set down on that bearing. But now I push it forward, you can see how everything lines up. And uh, it was a pretty good thing. I've never dealt with uh, a herringbone style uh, gear assembly like this. So you can see how everything lines up nicely just by resting it on that uh, bearing. So now I pull everything out. My pinion is locked in place. I know where it's going to go. Now I want to thread lock the inner race of this bearing to the main shaft to keep it from spinning. And I'm told it will last significantly longer. So uh, pretty much everybody I've talked to um, has said that this is the way to go. So lots of different techniques to do this. Uh, I know some people like to uh, just put thread lock on it after the entire thing's assembled and let it sort of seep in. Uh, place with the heli upside down. Uh, some people do like this and take the entire assembly out and put it together and let it dry. And then I think there's probably a third way, which is the way I'll probably use next if I ever do this, is to get it all kind of put together and then back in the heli and let it dry in the heli. Just would make me feel better. Um, but anyway, uh, the pinion is set. We've already got that done. So this should be a simple matter of letting the weight of that bearing uh, block just sit down on top of the pinion because that's how it's going to sit. And uh, now that I've added that red thread lock, um, I can just set this and leave it overnight, let it dry, and then put the entire thing back into the heli. And that's what I did. So one more check, make sure it's pushed down nicely, not too far, which is good because it's just a little bit of weight to hold it. And then the entire thing 
uh, drops back down into the frame and uh, basically screw that motor in again. Again, no thread lock here uh, yet because I still need to adjust pinion mesh. I could probably adjust pinion mesh right now while I'm working on this, but I decided I will do that later when I do the actual heli setup, I'm trying to keep the build and the setup kind of separate. So if you did everything right, all of your screw holes will still line up and uh, everything should, uh, should work the way it's supposed to. All right, so now I'm going to work on the landing skids. And, uh, you know, you've got these uh, landing skid braces, uh, the feet, if you will, or whatever you call these things. Uh, just make sure they're pointed in the right direction. They're going to kind of angle forward like this. They're going to sweep forward. I chose to put the uh, the pipes into the skid braces before the braces were mounted to the heli. Um, I don't know if it really matters which is easier. I have no idea. Um, and then I also uh, put the end caps on the pipes after I got them through just because I figured it would be easier than trying to push a capped end uh, in case the plastic was a little bit thicker. Um, but, you know, I just have to push on something hard to get those cap ends on, but it's pretty easy. Like I said, I don't know. It might be easier to put the braces on first and then slide the, the pipes through. I don't think it really matters. Um, once I have everything kind of set the way I want, um, I'm going to stretch it out to make it line up with the holes. And uh, we're good to go for installing the skids. All right, so you got a bag of screws here. You've got some larger screws, some smaller screws, and a couple of different sizes of grub screws. So make sure you're paying attention to that. We're using the longer screws here to mount the skid braces onto the frame. And of course, uh, four screws. And you can see, uh, previously I mentioned in the last video that it's important that those mounts uh, are put with the flat side down. And this is where that'll become important when you mount the landing gear. So I just get uh, everything lined up. And again, um, I mentioned there are two different size grub screws. So if you're not paying attention, you'll miss that. The bigger ones go here for the landing skids. The smaller ones we'll use here in just a minute. So get everything lined up in equal and then lock them in. Don't go too far. They will strip out very easy. The minute you feel resistance, just stop. All right. Now we are getting into some more controls. Uh, in this case, we're going to be working on uh, the left and right control lever and uh, a bunch of screws and balls. So um, first thing we need to do is put these uh, balls onto the control lever. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, should be pretty self-explanatory how they go. Now there is a left and a right and they are different. So you have to make sure you get them on correctly. Um, and I'll show you a quick trick to, to make sure. That's how that's going to go. And uh, then we also have uh, this, the elevator control lever with its balls. Uh, and you can see here, the uh, there is a side to that. So make sure we put that on right. All right, now these go on and uh, we'll point towards the back of the heli. And the top part will point a little bit forward. And so the trick is, and this is the way you would set up the heli later on, is put that Torx driver through all the holes. And your holes should line up if you've got them on right. If your holes don't line up, you've probably got them backwards. And you've got the left one on the right and the right one on the left. So everything should line up really nice, uh, just like that. And you can see the top of that uh, control level lever uh, is pointing a little bit more forward. And that's what you're looking for. Tighten these down on both sides. Uh, thread lock, of course. And there is a little bit of side-to-side -side play with these. Uh, most people I talk to say it doesn't really matter, so don't worry about it. Some people actually like to shim it. You decide. Just make sure they move freely. Now we're going to put on our elevator control lever um, using the smaller grub screws that we had. And again, I'm just kind of uh, feeling there's some, some detents that you would screw those into to lock them in place. And as I'm tightening, I'm just kind of wiggling it to find those spots and you'll know when you get it. Tighten it all down. And now we've got these links. These links are not adjustable for length. Um, they just turn to, uh, to get the right angle. And of course, uh, as all ball links, there is an inside and an outside. 
you want the uh, side with the little tiny hole right there, uh, you want that facing the ball. That's the larger inner diameter hole. And then uh, just get it turned at an angle so that it will line up to the swash ball. And that's kind of the angle right there. It's uh, like a 45 degree angle. Just like that. And again, I mentioned this before, it's really cool not to have to worry about measuring these out and putting them together. They're pre-built. All you have to do is twist them to the right angle and uh, you're good to go. Alrighty, so that's it. Uh, that's as far as we're gonna go with the frame part of the build. Uh, definitely have more to go. We're gonna be working on probably the tail uh, assembly next and getting the boom on. So stay tuned and I'll catch you on the next.